morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Markets here at True Potential. Now, it's US Thanksgiving holiday, so markets today in the US are closed, and tomorrow, Black Friday, will be another quiet day. So a lot of data releases were packed into Wednesday's schedule, so we'll update you with that now. Recall that one of the broad economic themes from Chris Leyland's team here is the idea of global growth slowing below trend. That is global growth cooling sufficiently that it starts to act and pull down on inflation pressures. And that's what we're beginning to see now corroborated in data from the US mainly. We're seeing very real evidence that goods deflation is taking hold in the US. That is, that there's a genuine fall in the price of goods and that these inflation pressures, which began over a year ago, led by goods, are now cooling off. And this is providing a near-term support for both equity returns and bond returns. It gives markets some confidence that central banks will not need to sound as hawkish with regards to future interest rate hikes as they have done for most of this year. Now, what leads us to that conclusion today? Well, yesterday we had the November release for the US Purchasing Manager indi uh, Indicator data. So these are activity measures which are real-time and timely measures of business sentiment and intentions. And the sub-components of those allow us to disaggregate where businesses are feeling confident or not particularly confident. Now, with regards to new orders for both the services industry and the manufacturing industry, seeing a genuine cooling, a genuine fall in those orders, which supports the idea of growth slowing. But positively, input prices, so the prices that businesses face, and also their output prices, the prices that they're willing to pass on to their customers and consumers, are both now at two-year lows. So a genuine sign of deflation across the broad US economy. And that's a very healthy sign, given what's been signaled as a requirement of the US Federal Reserve. However, expectations for future business activity remains buoyant across the US economy. So businesses are willing to stomach a short-term dip, allowing prices to fall, and are looking forward to activity picking up into next year. And this helps support employment levels so there's very little sign of weaknesses in the broad employment economy. And in fact, the only real weakness we're seeing in the manufacturing industry in the US is skills mismatch. So where the outlook for employment in the US is particularly depressed, which is within the manufacturing industry, it's because employers just can't match skills with their requirements. So it's not that they're looking to let workers go, they're still in the hunt for new vacancies. Now, if we bring this together, this supports the notion of the US Federal Reserve cooling the pace of interest rate hikes from the next meeting in December. That this would already been well flagged by Chairman Powell at the last meeting, but the minutes from that meeting released overnight really do support the notion that the days of 75 basis point hikes are behind us and the Fed will likely cool the pace towards 50 basis points at the next meeting and we may even see them cool those further towards 25 basis point interest rate hikes through 2023. And of course, a, slong, a slowing US economy actually helps export these disinflation pressures globally. Recall at the start of October that there were some severe movements in the pound sterling, where against the dollar it crashed to 103, following revelations about the PM Trust budget. We're now at 120, that is. Your pound today can buy $1.2 whereas it was only 1.03 around about seven weeks ago. And that's because global currencies are now appreciating versus the US dollar because US growth is, is slowing, disinflation pressures are emerging, and this allows global currencies to strengthen on the back of that. So hopefully, particularly in the, US, in the UK, we'll feel the benefit of those disinflation pressures in our own consumer prices imminently. And we're already seeing some of those at the petrol pump whereas you'll notice that um, petrol has dropped below £1.60 this month. So if we bring this together, we're seeing uh, consistent signs of deflation in goods. That gives us broader disinflation. So inflation has well and truly peaked, particularly in the US, and should fall rapidly through 2023. And this will allow central banks to moderate their hawkishness and allow these disinflation pressures to spread across the economy and hopefully see inflation return back towards 2%, unlikely to get towards 2% uh, 2 next year, 
but we're likely to get into a range that allows cent most central banks to stop hiking interest rates towards the second half of next year. And this is what supporting markets over the last two or three weeks. Markets are prepared to look through some short-term noise and see better days ahead. So that's all for today, but please join us tomorrow when we'll get a further update from our CIO, Jeff Casson. Thank you. If you're interested in taking your investing to the next level, or would like to know more about the options available to you when you retire, then download our free guides to ICES and pensions. These are available in the video description below.